हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज लेक्चर एट एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन इक्विलेंट थ्योरम टू करिस्टी एक्लेंट प्रिंसिपल नो वट आर द इक्विलेंट थ्योरम्स टू करिस्टी इक्लेंट प्रिंसिपल दिस थ्योरम से इज let m be a complete metric space and psi be a mapping going from m to r which is lower semi continuous and bounded below so we are having a mapping psi which is lower semi continuous and bounded below and suppose xi is a mapping which is going from r to r it is continuous strictly increasing concave downward and vanishes at zero vanishes at zero means Psi at zero is zero, and suppose there is a mapping G, which is self mapping going from M to M and satisfying this inequality. Then the mapping G has a fixed point in M. So we are given M, which is complete metric space, and we are having three mappings. One is psi, psi, and G. Psi is a lower semi continuous and bounded below. Xi is continuous, increasing, concave downward, and vanishes at zero. And G is self-mapping, satisfying this inequality. So what is this inequality? The psi of d of x comma g x is less than equal to psi of x minus psi of g x. And this is true for every x belonging to M. Then the mapping G has a fixed point. now since it is given that that xi is continuous increasing concave downward and vanishes at zero therefore the psi composition with t is a metric on m we can easily verify that it satisfy all the conditions of metric so therefore this is a metric on m now we consider any cauchy sequence in m with respect to this composition now what is given to us this xi is strictly increasing and vanishes at zero so therefore uh, since we have considered this as a cauchy sequence so therefore the distance of xn and xm uh, of xi it is zero whenever n m n going to infinity it implies that the limit of d of xn comma xm is also zero because it vanishes at zero and it is increasing right and this implies that xn is a cauchy sequence in m but m is complete so therefore this sequence should be convergent say it converges to x right so what we get we get uh, the distance of xn comma x is 0 when n goes to infinity okay by the continuity of xi this limit is also 0 because xi also vanishes at 0 and it is continuous so we get xn converges to x in m with respect to this metric right so we consider any cauchy sequence in this space and we get this is convergent so this implies this space is also complete so m is complete with respect to this metric so now we can apply karesty fixed point theorem and we can easily verify that that uh, g has a fixed point x because now this space will become complete and it satisfy all rest the uh, hypothesis of uh, uh, the kresty's fixed point theorem therefore the function g has a fixed point so this completes the proof now the corollary let m be a complete metric space and suppose that psi is a mapping going from m to r which is lower semi continuous and bounded below and for some r strictly greater than 0 and less than equals to 1 if g satisfy this inequality then g has a fixed point we can easily prove this theorem by using the previous theorem by substituting anxiety to be t to the power r now clearly this anxiety mapping is continuous it is increasing it is concave downward and it vanishes at zero so it satisfy all the hypothesis of previous theorem so by using the previous theorem we get this 
function has a fixed point. Now the next is what do you mean by Hausdorff matrix space? Let's suppose M D be any matrix space with D usual matrix and F be a family of all non-empty bounded closed subsets of M. So what is this family? It is a family of all non-empty bounded closed subsets. Now we take any A from this family and we can define epsilon neighborhood of A to be the set this one. So for given epsilon greater than 0, it is a set of all those x belonging to M such that the distance of x point with the set A is strictly less than epsilon. Then this set is the epsilon neighborhood of A. How to define the distance between a point and a set? This distance will be defined by you find out the distances of the point x with all the points from A, right? And find out the minimum one. That minimum will be the distance of the point x from the set A. So, whenever this distance is less than epsilon for such x belonging to M, then on the set of all the those x which satisfy this condition will become the epsilon neighborhood of A. Similarly, we can define the epsilon neighborhood of B. So, what will be the Hausdorff matrix? Hausdorff matrix is the set of all those uh, positive numbers. Uh, it may be greater than equals to 0 also. It is an infimum of all those epsilon greater than equals to 0 such that A is a subset of epsilon neighborhood of B and B is a subset of epsilon neighborhood of A. Right? So, uh, this set, the minimum value of epsilon for which this condition hold will become the metric and that metric is called Hausdorff metric. So, the family F with respect to this metric is a metric space and this metric is called Hausdorff metric on the family F. So now further Banach contraction mapping principle extend nicely to the set valued mapping and it was first noticed by Nadler and the main idea was if we take two non-empty closed bounded subset of a matrix space let's suppose they are A and B if we take any point X from A and then epsilon greater than 0 there must exist a point Y from B such that the distance of X and Y is less than equal to h of a b where h of a b is what it is the housed of distance between the sets a and b plus epsilon right? so distance of x y satisfying this thing satisfying this inequality for some epsilon greater than 0 so now we use that previous idea in this theorem let md be a complete metric space and f be a family of collection of all non-empty bounded closed subsets of M and do it with the Hausdorff metric H. Suppose that T is a mapping going from M to the family and this mapping is contraction in the sense that for some K less than 1, the Hausdorff distance between Tx and Ty is less than equal to k times the distance between x and y where x and y are the members of m. So, if the mapping T satisfying this inequality with respect to the house of dis difference, distance or house of metric, then there exists a point x in m such that this x belongs to Tx. So once again see what this theorem says, let MD be complete metric space, F be a family of all non-empty bounded closed subsets with respect to the matrix H, housed of matrix H and T be a mapping going from M to this family and this mapping satisfying this contraction condition, then there exists a point in M such that X belongs to Tx. For the proof, First, we consider any point from the set M, right? Then the image of this will become a set 
and we choose any point x from x1 from this set also there it must exist a point x2 which belongs to the set t of x1 such that these two points satisfy this inequality what is this inequality that the distance of so we have to choose x1 and x2 in such a way that it satisfy this inequality the distance of x1 comma x2 is less than or equal to the hausdorff metric of t of x0 because this belongs to t of x0 and x2 it belongs to t of x1 so t of x1 so it is a metric between these two sets plus some number k where k is less than 1 right similarly there exists some x3 belonging to t of x such x2 such that it satisfy this inequality right so this is d of x2 comma x3 right which is less than equal to h of t of x1 comma t of x2 plus k square and so on so proceeding by the induction we obtain a sequence xn in m satisfying this property that whenever i belonging to a natural number x of i plus 1 belongs to t of xi for which this condition holds the distance of xi comma xi plus 1 is less than equal to h of this belongs to t of xi minus 1 this belongs to t of xi plus k to the power i but further by the given hypothesis this is less than equal to k times the distance of xi minus 1 comma xi right and further this is what using this concept this is less than equal to this plus this so distance of xi comma xi plus 1 will be less than equal to k times again further we use the previous inequality now combine these two and generalize it we get this is less than equal to k to the power i distance of x0 comma x1 plus i times k to the power i where k is strictly less than 1 now take to the summation to both sides we get summation of this will be less than equal to this number is some constant you can take outside summation of this with respect to i and summation of this with respect to i since k is strictly less than 1 so by using ratio test we can easily verify that this series is convergent so this value is finite and we can also verify that this is also convergent so both these series are convergent so tail should be going to 0 so whenever i going to infinity this number should go into 0 because this is going to 0 this is going to 0 right so tail should go into 0 so what we have this series is convergent so this series is finite so whenever this series is convergent this implies the distance of xn and xm it also goes to 0 whenever nm going to infinity so this implies that xn is a Cauchy sequence but m is complete so therefore xn must be convergent in m so say it converges to x further t is continuous so therefore the distance of xn comma x this is going to 0 so h of txn comma tx which is less than equal to k times the distance of xn comma x and this is going to 0 and k is also less than 1 so therefore this also going to 0 whenever n going to infinity and further t is continuous and also xn belongs to t of xn minus 1 so therefore the limit of distance of xn and tx so you can replace this this is xn and tx the distance of the points xn from this set tx is nothing but the distance of xn with y where y is varying uh, any point from that set tx find out the infimum of this all and this should be 0 right so 
when you take n tending to infinity this is nothing but x so we get x comma tx this distance should be 0 so this implies this x should belongs to tx basically this is a limit point of this but since tx is closed therefore this should belongs to tx and this thing we have to prove this completes the proof